Welcome to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. It's being called a Quarantine 15 Online, people poking fun at gaining weight while staying at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. Is it really a problem or is eating helping us deal with our stress? And what about for our kids? Public health researchers warn that COVID-19 related school closures will double out of school time this year, raising concerns about weight gain associated with summer recess for our children. With us to discuss this is the Director of Mayo Clinic Healthy Living Program, Dr. Donald Henrood. Dr. Henrood, welcome to the program. Thank you, happy to be here, Sanj. Well, I alluded to it a little bit in the introduction about this Quarantine 15 online. Can you explain what that is for a lot of people who may not be familiar with that? Well, we don't have any data yet, it's too early to tell, but obviously people's habits have changed quite a bit since we're spending more time at home. Now, I wanna make a point for some people, Getting enough food, getting enough calories, and maintaining weight may be an issue. So some people may have to worry about uh, maintaining their weight, not unintentionally losing weight. But for many of us, our habits have changed. For example, people think about exercise right away, and they should. Fitness centers are closed. People may be doing less exercise and burning less activities, uh, less calories through activity that way. What people don't think quite as much about, though, is low-level activity throughout the day. Even if we have a desk job, we have to walk at least to our car to get to work. We may walk throughout the day, we may walk to lunch. And so if we're spending time at home, that low level activity may be causing us to burn less overall calories. On the flip side, we may be consuming more calories. Uh, on the good side, we, if we're eating out less at restaurants, sometimes that can be high calorie. We may still be taking a, a takeout at home. So there might be a little bit of a good thing there in decreasing calories. However, many people are stocking up, uh, just like toilet paper. I've seen people at the, at the store loading up with foods that will last a long time, frozen foods, processed foods that have a long shelf life. Many times they're higher in calories and less healthy. On the flip side, for example, fruits and vegetables. They don't last as long and we may be consuming less than that. So there are a number of reasons why we might be at risk for weight gain through our habits that have changed both in burning activity and in consuming more calories. And what about snacking? Have you noticed people are now a little bit more bored at home and they're snacking more often, for example? It could be. Obviously, this is anecdote, but if, if people are at home, they're around food more often. Uh, we tend to eat out of stress. That might be an additional factor. So there are a number of factors, availability, types of food, amount of food, uh, and the stress we're undergoing that may contribute to increased calorie intake and weight gain. So obviously we all like our food. Um, you, you know, you're very active, you're very healthy. Tell us what you've been doing to stay in shape. Well, for many people, this is a big change in their routine, as we've talked about. I have uh, an old bicycle that I have on a trainer in my basement, and so that's helped me stay active. Uh, we've tried, our families tried to go for walks to get that low level activity. An important factor is that the more we deviate from our usual routine and the longer it goes on, the more this is going to influence our weight. So if we can establish our new normal of habits related to calories burned and energy intake, then we can establish that new equilibrium and hopefully it won't be too, at a too much higher weight than what we usually uh, weigh. So you mentioned those family walks that you, that you go on, and a lot of people I see are walking in the neighborhood, and they're walking for a long period of time, maybe more than they usually do. Does that substitute for the, for example, the 20 to 30 minute aerobic workouts that people are doing? As we've said for a long time, any activity is good activity. Exercise is the most efficient way to burn calories. You can bore, burn more per unit time, but that low level activity is important. So establishing that and maintaining that. One example of how important this is, if you think about New York City, for example, we've known for some time that people who live in urban areas and in large cities tend to weigh less than people who live in rural areas because they're walking a lot. Look at the snapshot of New York City sidewalks or other big cities. They used to be crowded with people walking and burning off calories, and now they're virtually deserted. That's just an example of how it can influence our activity and how we have to establish those new routines to, to burn those calories and maintain our weight. So as you said, we'll, we'll try our best to uh, maintain our weight, but sometimes we, we might slip and we might gain five, 10, 15 pounds. 
why, why is that a concern for, for not only adults, but also children who are at home now and not at school? We can look at that a number of ways. For example, a few pounds short term may not make a difference. It could be fluid. It might be just a little weight gain while we establish new routines. Obviously, the more weight we gain and the longer it's maintained, the more it affects our health. For children, for example, it's been shown that children's weight tracks to some extent. So if children establish those habits or lack of healthy habits when they're young and they gain weight, that might persist as they go into adolescence and adulthood. Similarly, with adults, uh, as we maintain those habits, if we can establish a new routine, the longer this goes on, then we can arrest that weight gain and try and maintain normal weight. It's more important for some people than others. For example, people who have diabetes or high blood pressure, just a modest amount of weight gain, and some people, if they're sensitive to that, can increase their blood glucose and blood pressure, uh, and they won't have as well a good a control over these factors, over these conditions. So it depends on the individual, it depends on their health conditions, and it depends on long-term habits and routines. So as you mentioned, the, the chronic health issues that can uh, develop from increased weight gain, especially from childhood going into adulthood. How big a problem is childhood obesity? We've known for quite some time that weight is increasing in virtually every sub-segment of society. Adults, children, men, women. Uh, it's been actually reported that African-American men are the ones who are gaining the least weight, but overall, everybody is gaining weight. As we go on, uh, as children establish uh, their adult weights, uh, it's been said that the children these days may be the first generation who lives less long compared to their parents and mm. their grandparents. So it's having a huge impact. We know that weight influences diabetes, high blood pressure, abnormal blood cholesterol values, heart disease, many cancers. So it does have a strong impact on our health. It's hard to predict who is going to be affected by that. So we all need to maintain healthy habits and, and try and maintain not only a good weight, but healthy lifestyle habits in diet and physical activity. You've talked very eloquently about the role of physical activity. Can we just talk a little bit about the diet? You know, now people are at home, for example, uh, they're doing more things like baking, making cakes that they may not have done beforehand. Can you talk to us about some of the healthy dietary habits we should be adhering to during this uh, uh, pandemic? So everybody is getting accustomed to this new normal. And again, I'd encourage people to establish those new healthy habits now and don't let it happen to you. You have to be a little proactive about this, and that'll make it easier in the long term. So break out of your comfort zone. Instead of giving in to large amounts of comfort food, this can be an opportunity to take foods that we may not think of as healthy. You can make bean burritos or even pizza. Uh, if you make it in the correct way, it can be a healthy food. So invest some time. Planning is a real key here. If you plan ahead rather than just grabbing something at the last moment, raise your culinary skills and do a little bit more cooking. Uh, it's an opportunity for that too. So if we can em embrace this, embrace our new normal, look for opportunities to establish new healthy routines, eating healthy and eating well, don't have, it doesn't have to be drudgery. It can and should be an enjoyable way to live. And if we can do that, then we can better manage our weight and our overall health during this pandemic. So Dr. Hensrud, you talked about enjoying one life and sometimes going along with that is, is alcohol and drinking alcohol. Can you talk to us a little bit about how alcohol consumption can also in an excess lead to weight gain? Well, we all know that alcohol contains calories and there is some initial data that alcohol sales throughout the country have increased. That's understandable. People aren't uh, in their normal routine, they're home more, they're relaxing more in the evening. It is an enjoyable habit. However, habits can sneak up and bite you in various ways. Possible, some people may uncover a predisposition to abuse, but for many of us, it's just the extra calories that alcohol adds. So we need to be careful and again, be proactive about it, set a routine, try and stick to it, enjoy things, but uh, try and avoid the excesses of excess calories in general and too much alcohol that can come back and, and uh, influence our health in a negative way. Don, any, anything else we need to add that we haven't discussed? We've talked about a lot of things, and I think it gets down to the basics, like many things. Establishing new habits takes a little effort, a little planning, but it doesn't have to be drudgery. Making new habits, just like in the past. If we do that, if we come up with things that are practical, 
and enjoyable, then they're likely to be sustainable and can help us manage this pandemic we're all in and try and maintain our health and our enjoyment of life. We've been discussing weight gain during the pandemic with the director of Mayo Clinic Healthy Living Program, Dr. Donald Hensbrew. Again, Don, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.